financial crisis, securitization became pretty much a dirty word. But now not only securitization is back, it is also entering new territories, such as the traditionally safe and straightforward trade finance space. To help me discuss this, I'm joined by my colleague Jane Cooper, our transaction banking editor. Jane, what's happening? Well, trade finance has been around for a long, long time, hundreds and hundreds of years, and securitization is just starting to emerge in this space. Um, it's, it's securitization isn't a new idea. It's been around for maybe sort of about 10 years. Um, but we never seen it before in trade finance, right? In well, the trade finance people area. have tried to do it before. Say about eight years ago, there's a couple of private deals that have been done. And back in 2007, Standard Charter did one. But at the end of last year, we just sort of started to see a handful of deals come through. So in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about securitization. And now it seems that... It is actually materialising. Yes. And what prompted these deals? Well, it's, it's part of the regulation. So with Basel III, all the banks are under pressure with their uh, capital. Um, and because of Basel III, a lot of people have been looking how can they offload their assets and keep lending, keep the same clients. So they're offloading uh, pretty safe assets and turn into securitization. I'm presuming that a few people are raising eyebrows and thinking, are we going to see what's happened during the financial crisis mm -hmm. again? Well, yeah, I mean, securitization, I mean, everyone just gets so nervous about it, right? And uh, there is the worry, oh, is this toxic? And could, could we see the same problems again? So uh, the issue with trade finance is that it's a very short-term asset, and investors don't want to be investing every 30, 60, or 90 days. So investors will in invest for a term of, say, three years, and they'll be investing in a pool. So the issue with trade finance is you have to keep replenishing that pool every t every 30 days, every 60 So the issue is what's going into that pool and, and the el eligibility criteria of that. And there's, um, I mean, these are emerging markets and, and countries all over the world, companies all over the world, and the, the collateral, the goods that are being shipped, they could be anywhere. So it's very complex, very international. It's a new, it's a new type of complexity, if, if you wish. But also I'm presuming mm -hmm. that because the term of these loans is shorter, so we're talking mm -hmm. about short term, this probably is helping uh, realizing if there are problems early on. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, if there are problems with it, they will happen earlier on. I mean, if it's a 30-day loan and people start defaulting, unlike mortgages, where really it takes a couple of years to manifest itself, mm -hmm. you know, and then in those two years, people have still been pushing money into it. So at least with this, the, the warning signs should come earlier with it, yes. And how many deals have we seen so far? Um, so at the in 2013, BNP Paribas did the Lighthouse deal. Comets Back have done one, and City and Santander did a, a joint um, deal. Together. So that's quite a new type, right? A joint yeah. deal. Yes. Do you think that we're going to see more of these deals? Yes. Yeah, so it's quite difficult when you're trying to um, feed that pool of new assets. You have to have quite a range of diversification of countries and. And it's difficult for banks to have that breadth of assets all on their own. So that's why that deal is significant, because other blank banks can plug into it and to provide that diversity in the pool. Yeah. So trade obviously will continue, and trade will need financing. So we're probably going to see more of these deals come into the market. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, people are sort of saying in a long-term trend, this is going to pick up, because now people are finding ways of, of structuring it. The initial worry with the Basel III regulations is um, that trade finance would be treated unfavorably, but um, the industry has been lobbying. Um, it was how it was being counted in the leverage ratio, and that they've now been given some concessions by the regulators. So there's less need for it to be done so urgently, but in the long term, trade is going to increase. Um, banks are going to be constrained um, with the regulations and they want to keep their existing customers and keep lending so they have to find new ways of financing that. Thank you very much and to find out more about securitization in trade finance uh, you'll uh, find all the details in the bankers April cover story which is about this topic.